Wait, remember Duel Masters? Oh, you mean that clone of Yu-Gi-Oh that popped up during the early 2000s rise in trading card game based media? To that I'd say, it was perceived that way by many, even by me when I was a kid, but heck, I still bought the products for a bit. While it's easy to look at the anime and the card game and see the comparisons flooding in about Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh really isn't the reason that Duel Masters is even a thing, but rather it was Magic the Gathering, and then a little bit of Pokemon, that caused the full-on Duel Masters as most people know it. But it's origins are a bit more interesting in how it came to be, what it fully turned into as well. But why didn't it hit among the levels of the big three while they were rising massively in the early 2000s? Today, we are going to look into all of that, where did Duel Masters come from, what it had to offer, how was the anime handled, and ultimately what happened to the property in the end. I have a massive affinity for TCG or trading card game based properties, or properties that have a massive tie-in to the TCG scene. So less the shows that just had a little supported card game for a time, and more so the shows that either heavily focused on a card game, or supported one on the side like Pokemon. I've looked into several of these in the past, and that's not stopping anytime soon, as Duel Masters is something I fondly remember coming out, and how I collected the card game for a little while and also played the video games on the Game Boy Advance and PlayStation 2. But the anime was always fascinating to me as it never fully captured my attention like Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh ever did. So let's dive into it all. Welcome back to the 25 Days of Fringe Miss, where there's going to be brand Wait, 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 wait. Uh-uh. Ah. Double Fringe Miss. Aw, you only thought you were gonna get 25 videos this year? Look at you. You look silly. But I'm here to fix that because I'm going to give you not only 25 videos, but I'm giving you 50 videos. I have two channels. That's two Fringe Misses. Each day there'll be a brand new video on both channels for 25 days. I haven't slept in months. Enjoy the content. Or don't. Let's look into how it all began, back before Duel Masters was truly just Duel Masters. It began as a manga series written by Shinjinobu Matsumoto, with the manga being published by Shogakukan in the Koro Koro comic magazine. Matsumoto developed it as a way to promote the TCG game Magic the Gathering, with the first six volumes of the manga showing the main characters of the series playing Magic the Gathering. As Duel Masters gained popularity, the card publishing company Wizards of the Coast, the creators of Magic the Gathering, also known for acquiring the rights for publishing the Pokemon TCG in August of 1998 weren't really a fan of how the direction of TCG was going in Japan, where there was a refusal to license certain Pokemon TCG sets, and eventually they wanted to make their own cards for the sets to make Pokemon a more competitive playstyle for the TCG. This caused creative differences between Wizards of the Coast and the original publisher of the Pokemon TCG in Japan, Media Factory. Eventually, Wizards of the Coast wanted to make their own TCG to compete directly with the Pokemon TCG, working closely with Takara Tomy and bringing on Mike Elliott, who previously was the lead of the Pokemon team at Wizards, to develop the Duel Masters card game. The payoff from doing this was working as Duel Masters was growing strong in its first year on the market and for the competitive scene, but as we all may know, the relationship between Wizards of the Coast and the Pokemon company in general was falling apart. Luckily, there is Duel Masters, and in March of 2004, the Duel Masters card game would be brought to the US and be on store shelves and in hobby shops to be a real direct competitor in a crowded scene. And of course, we were in an era where a card game needed an anime adaptation, or an anime needed some form of card game. So in October of 2002, the Duel Masters anime would premiere in Japan, airing until December 22nd, 2003. The series covers the Temple of Duels arc of the manga, following the adventure of a young duelist named Shobu Kirifuda, who battles his way to stardom in an attempt to follow in his father's footsteps and become a kaiju master. With help from his mentor named Knight and his friends Rakuta, Sayuki, and Mimi, Shobu battles against strong opponents, including a Reaper duelist Kokujo, the leader of a group known as the White Soldiers Hakuo, and the Master of the Temple. The English dub of the series was produced by Hasbro and Plastic Cow Productions, and they put together a premiere episode titled The Good, The Bad, and The Ball Shack, which was a combination of the first two episodes that aired on Cartoon Network's Toonami block on February 27, 2004, with the series making its official premiere on April 13, 2004, and would continue airing until September 4, 2004. But we need to dig into the story. Duel Masters will return in a moment on Tsunami.
For the anime, the story follows Shobu Kirifuda, as he's daydreaming about how big of a dual master that he could become when he grows up. He gets a call from the father of his best friend, Rakuta, informing him that a kaijudo tournament has started, and if he and Rakuta don't get to the stadium in time, they will be disqualified. In the world of the show, kaijudo is the name of the game being played, even if the actual card game in real life is just called Duel Masters. As Shobu is on his way to the stadium, he gets a weird feeling as he notices a strange man in a sport car staring at him. He doesn't put too much thought into it and continues running towards the stadium. At least he's aware of his surroundings, but after a while of participating in the Kaijudo tournament, Shobu has defeated his last opponent and is now progressing towards the finals where he is up against a player named Joe. Joe knows how much more skilled at the game Shobu is and is distraught that he may end up losing to him with his current deck. But the mysterious man from earlier that Shobu saw sneaks Joe a deck of light cards. Shobu's friends notice Joe switching decks to cheat in the tournament, but as the tournament continues, Shobu manages to defeat Joe despite the deck change, winning the tournament as a whole. Afterwards, the mysterious man congratulates Shobu on his win and introduces himself as Knight, offering Shobu a duel in the stadium the next day, and at first, Shobu takes this as a joke, but eventually gives in and accepts after some slight taunting from Knight. Arriving back to the stadium the day after, Rakuta takes notice of Knight's trophies on display and exclaims that Knight just might be the greatest kaijudo master in the world. Knight shrugs this off and starts the match between him and Shobu, and during this, Shobu begins to get cocky, but is immediately warned by Knight as he states that he's never participated in a real duel before, telling him he has a long way to go and that he shouldn't be just trying to beat him, but to want to win. One of Knight's cards fires a beam that knocks the shield card off the table, and states that swift attacks won't always work and that he needs to play from his heart to win. Ah, the whole heart of the cards thing. Yeah, I get why we all looked at this as a Yu-Gi-Oh clone. Soon enough, Shobu is only left with one shield as he's sinking into despair, on the verge of quitting, then he remembers something his father father told him, believe in yourself and you'll always win. From this memory of his father, Shobu regains the strength to hold his own against Knight, managing to draw Bullshock Dragon with a swiping technique, allowing him to successfully generate mana. Shobu's Bullshock Dragon manages to take out Knight's Gatling Sky Terror pretty easily, which was a card that should have taken out Shobu's Bullshock Dragon without trouble. In the end, unfortunately, Knight defeats Shobu with the Light Civilization card Holy Awe. It's a strong opening to bring us into the world of Duel Masters, seeing how the game is played, albeit not in the best way to understand how to actually play the game in real life, but at least we get to see who Shobu is as a person and a duelist. As he continues on his journey to become the best duelist that he can be, he comes face to face with the skilled duelist Hakuo. After an intense battle with him, Shobu stands victorious, and his next match is up against a small and sized duelist named George, which leads George to kidnapping Shobu to have an isolated duel somewhere in the wilderness, but in order for Shobu to return home, he must face George's mentor, Dr. Ru quickly coming to terms that this duel might be more difficult than the duel he previously had with Hakuo. The duel ends with Shobu losing his mojo and gaining the ability to hear voices from his creature cards, helping him gain a connection to them and ultimately still trying to give it his all going forward. He battles with the usual and relatable trope of self-doubt in these hills and valleys of feeling good and feeling defeated. He learned how to duel from his father, who left his home and family to continue kaijudo training, which Shobu hopes to meet him again someday, but unless there's some grand conspiracy for why he never returned, he just ditched his family over a game. This Double Fringe Miss is brought to you by Gamersubs. And why don't you hit that link down below and go over to Gamersubs, pick yourself out something nice, use code FRINCH, get 10% off. Shobu loves to duel more than anything. He tries to keep a positive attitude throughout the first season and mostly duels for fun opposed to doing it just to win. Rakuta is Shobu's best friend and he has a hobby of collecting and learning more about the cards and often helps Shobu win duels. His father owns a popular local card shop and while he is an expert at knowing the rules and a lot of information regarding Kaijudo, Rakuta himself is a terrible duelist, not making it through a tournament with a single win, as he cannot properly use the cards. Sayuki is someone who always cheers for Shobu during his duels. She will do anything to help out a friend and loves the game of Kaijudo despite not knowing much about it. She's just a real pal at the end of the day. Knight is a character who doesn't appear in the manga but is loosely based on the manga only character Knack, as he becomes Shobu's mentor, though usually he has trouble assisting him at times of need due to being late to a duel, or for Shobu's somewhat stubborn attitude. He has a very strange personality, as he comes off as very mystic with little known about him in his past, aiding 
ending in there being a larger mystery surrounding his character throughout. He comes off as a more calm and collected person, but as we do know, he is a very highly skilled duelist. There is a bit of a school life aspect to the show as Shobu often likes to focus on playing kaijudo rather than just paying attention in school. This leads to him having an interesting relationship with his teacher, Miss Betsy, who takes schooling and her job as a teacher very seriously, but has a respect for the game itself. So while she's mad that Shobu is all about the game during school, she is also cheering him on during official tournaments, which I find to be a pretty cool perspective for an authority figure to have in a series like this. Going into the series lore a bit more, there's Mimi, who is portrayed as being clueless about how to duel, but very fascinated with the kaijudo card game in general. She is later revealed to have been a temple guardian working for the master, later on becoming friends with Shobu. Oh yeah, that's right, the master and the temple and all that. So the master is the main antagonist of the first season, being the leader of the temple, which is an organization that operates within the junior duelist center. We aren't privy to a lot of information about him, but he is the teacher and dueling coach of Hakuo. Knight suggests that he's responsible for brainwashing Hakuo and plans to use him for revenge against the creature world. The creature world is a thing I'll get into a tiny bit, but for Hakuo, he is perceived as a very intelligent duelist with a large win streak. He is the leader of the White Soldiers, which are an elite team of duelists that work under the Master. He is basically represented as the strongest duelist and is often seen as an example of a perfect duelist. After the first season concluded, an exclusive season titled Duel Master's Sacred Land, commonly referred to as Season 1.5, serving as an immediate continuation of the first season released in North America. It was produced by Hasbro Studios and Elastic Media Corporation, premiering on Cartoon Network on March 26, 2005, and wrapping up on June 17, 2005. This season is not based on any storyline from the manga series and is considered as non-canon to the franchise overall. Continuing where the first dubbed season ended, Shobu is struggling to regain his dueling mojo back as he comes across his father's diary, which helps him to begin to recover said dueling mojo, and also help him in becoming a better duelist. In this season, we're introduced to a new evil organization who calls themselves the Powerful Loyal Order of Princes, or PLOOP for short. They plan to use a dark amulet deck case, which is a corrupted version of the amulet deck case, which was used to calm the creatures down, allowing duelists to train the creatures easier, and become true kaijudo duelists. Much like in Yu-Gi-Oh's lore, the creatures were once, and in some way technically still very much are, more than just a card game. Ploop managed to find a way to reverse the process of this with dark energy to make the creatures go berserk. One of the members of Ploop, Prince Maurice, cloned the amulets, making one for each member of the organization's army to control the creatures, in an attempt to take over both the real world and the creature world. So all the creatures on the cards are from these handful of tribes in this parallel world, and to truly deep dive what has happened in the past there, in 2011 there was a manga series called The Story of Duel Masters that goes way more into that. But back in the mid-2000s, especially for the US experience of the show, we really got more questions than answers, making it harder for a fan to connect with the show and on top of that, the lore. The only other season to come to audiences outside of Japan was Duel Masters Charge. This version of the show, speaking specifically for the English dub, is very scarce to find, and seems to not have been properly archived. It has been around here and there at different points according to records showing that it's been on services like Tubi. Duel Masters Charge, however, would take place three years after the events of the first season, focusing on the return of Shobu from his training in the Battle Arena tournament arc. In the midst of his return, he comes across a new evil organization known as the Fua Duelists, with their leader, Zakira, a strong kaijudo duelist sharing similarities to Hakuo, Zakira and his followers capture Hakuo and manage to turn him against Shubo and friends, making it a more challenging journey for Shobu ahead, while also being a very charismatic person. His main goal is to acquire the Duel Master's Proof, a magical stone that would grant Zakira the title of Duel Master, and use of the power obtained from it to take over the world. The anime does its best to showcase how the card game is played, and does follow a lot of the rules of the game very closely, as the show goes on for the most part, but the game itself has elements inspired by both Magic the Gathering and the Pokemon TCG, but with this coming from the same people who created Magic the Gathering, it feels almost like an unnecessary stepping stone for a younger audience member to get into Magic, which could lead to why it never fully took off in the US. This did have its time in the US, and it seemed that it could never fully resonate here when Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and Magic the Gathering were everyone's cup of tea for the most part. It was a crowded market and hard to fight for attention, but to maybe a surprise for most people out there, Duel Masters was anything but a dead franchise beyond what we got here in the US. So let's take a look at what truly happened to Duel Masters. Duel Masters will return in a moment on Tsunami. 
In the US, Duel Masters came out swinging, bringing over the card game and the anime as well as some games too. But the downfall of Duel Masters in North America is an interesting topic debated amongst the community for years. But aside from the card game related issues, another reason going around is because of how poorly the dub of the anime was handled. Not really taking things as seriously as the anime did in Japan, making it more of an over exaggerated performance mixed in with jokes that either landed a good punchline for some or completely flew over people's heads. The mix of calling the card game a different name and especially early on with how it throws you in with some bare bones explanations of how to actually play didn't lend well to selling the product of the cards outside of the show. The marketing wasn't marketing, if you catch my drift. So for the US, the plug was pulled for Duel Masters, and the focus would turn to Japan. While it heavily declined here in the US, the franchise did extremely well in Japan, gaining more seasons after the initial three that North America had, including spin-off series, some movie, more manga, a short film, and along with that, many more video games and mobile games that came out. In fact, in Japan, it looks like the card game is still massively popular, and the franchise there has been kept alive by a thriving player base and widespread fandom, which is nice to see that the series really found a way to resonate with an audience and continue to build upon their initial foundation. Now, there was another attempt to bring the series back to the US in 2012. It was called Kaijudo Rise of the Duel Masters, and it ran for a solid two seasons with 56 episodes until the end of 2013. That also didn't take off here in the US, but it tried to reinvent the style of what Duel Masters could be and overall looked like. I would love to see what others out there think of Duel Masters. Were you a fan of the card game, the anime, both? Or was it something you skipped over or gave up on if you tried giving it a shot? Tell me in the comments below. I've been Jordan Fringe. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Later.